Hi and welcome. In this talk, we're going to talk about how to build an internal developer platform using a tech stack made up of a few technologies that we're going to take a look at, mainly Backstage, uh, Crossplane, Argo CD, and vCluster. My name is Sam Gabriel, and let's get started. So what do I do? I've been in the IT field for over 17 years, I'm working in different technologies, starting off with telecom and network engineering, and then landed in DevOps slash platform engineering. I worked for multiple different uh, companies in the past, so the likes of HashiCorp, Sysdig, and Docker. And currently, I'm the founder of a company called Tech and Aid Solutions, Inc. It's a consulting company and also build online content. In the platform engineering space, I have uh, courses, YouTube videos, a YouTube channel, and I also am an instructor for a uh, number of HashiCorp courses such as Vault, Terraform, and Nomad. So let's go ahead and get started here. In the tech stack, as I mentioned, we have a few things. We've got Backstage, Crossplane, Argo CD, vCluster. Uh, we also have a little bit of GitHub Actions and a keyless for storing our secrets. Okay, so what is Backstage? If anybody here doesn't know what this is, this is basically a, an open source platform that was uh, donated by Spotify. So Spotify created it and open sourced it for the community to use as an internal developer portal or a front end. And what it does, basically think of it as an internal app store for your developer teams. You can create templates, you can create dashboards and developer portals. It helps to standardize and helps you to automate how your team can create, manage infrastructure and apps. Uh, you can use it as a self-service portal for all your workflows. It has a catalog. Uh, you can also have solvent documentation to know who is uh, the owner of what application and so on. So that's the first technology here. The second one, is Crossplane, and Crossplane is another open source project under CNCF, and it lets you manage your cloud resources using Kubernetes as a control plane. And if you're familiar with Terraform, it's uh, in the same space. Basically, it's an infrastructure as code tool that helps you to build uh, build anything in cloud or on prem, really. So it uh, it can create databases, VMs cloud networks, and it uses Kubernetes CRDs. It supports multi-cloud setups, AWS, GCP, Azure, and like I said, even on-prem. And it helps build platforms as code where developers can request infrastructure just like they would uh, when deploying applications. Okay, so next up is Argo CD. And if you don't know what Argo CD is, it basically is a GitOps tool for Kubernetes and it keeps your clusters in sync with Git. So your Git repo becomes the single source of truth and it watches that Git repo and applies changes to your cluster automatically. It shows a visual dashboard, as you can see on the screen here, of what's running versus what's in Git and it can help you sync that. And it makes your deployments repeatable and auditable and you always know who changed what and when. All right, the next one is GitHub Actions. And with GitHub Actions, it's a CICD pipeline similar to the likes of Jenkins or GitLab. And you can run jobs like tests, builds, and deploys. It helps with workflows that are defined in YAML format inside of your .github slash workflows folder inside of your repo. And like I said, supports CI, CD, and custom automations. And then finally here, we've got Achilles. And Achilles is a cloud-based secrets manager. So if you're familiar with HashiCorp Vault, Achilles does similar things. It stores and protects things like passwords, API keys, uh, database credentials, supports dynamic secrets, meaning that it's short-lived credentials that are just in demand, just in time that you can use. And you don't have to manage any of your backend servers, of course, because it's a SaaS offering. And we're gonna use it for our kube config for our V clusters as we run V clusters. And actually the last technology for sure here is V cluster. 
And V cluster is basically a method to carve out a host cluster into smaller Kubernetes clusters that allows you to isolate your, your clusters. And you can give those clusters to developers, for example, to run your tenant workloads. So without vCluster, you can see here we have um, you know, your tenant workloads. You have to create multiple clusters, and each cluster would have its own applications and maybe some management software they might need and, and monitoring software. Whereas when we look at vCluster, you have one big cluster and then we're separating them and isolating them and you can see the tenant workloads but at the same time we can share some applications like vault for example or, or opa or istio or cert manager datadog uh, across all those tenants in our cluster so it's very neat technology and it's lightweight it's similar to namespaces but it gives you more isolation by separating like separate clusters and it is very fast to launch like containers. So why vClusters? It reduces your Kubernetes costs and uh, by using these virtual Kubernetes clusters, so you don't have to spin up host clusters every time, you're efficiently using that host cluster. And it instantly spins up hundreds of Kubernetes clusters in seconds and for a fraction of the cost of a real cluster, which can cut your Kubernetes costs by up to 50%. And you'll see in the demo later that it takes about half an hour to spin up an EKS cluster in, in AWS. But with virtual clusters within that EKS cluster, you can very quickly spin up those clusters and give them to your developers. All right, so what are we going to build? Well, we have two pieces in this demo. The first piece is we're going to build the host EKS cluster. And we're going to do that by First off, using Backstage as our front-end portal. So you're going to use Backstage not only for your developers to request virtual clusters, but also you can use it for your platform engineers to build EKS clusters. So we're going to use a template inside of Backstage. And when this template launches, when you fill up the form inside of Backstage for that template, it's going to trigger GitHub Actions, which will run a pipeline. And that pipeline is going to create an Argo CD application. And that Argo CD application is going to trigger Crossplane to go ahead and configure or provision the resources inside of AWS. And that way, you can build that EKS cluster inside of AWS. So the next piece of the demo now is basically we're switching hats from a platform engineer to a developer, and we want to be able to provide the uh, ability for our developers to request vClusters uh, as a self-service portal through Backstage, right? So we're going to give them once again a template inside of Backstage, they fill up the form, they request a cluster, and to them, it's a Kubernetes cluster. They don't know the difference between a host cluster and a V cluster. That's the cluster they want to use to do some development work. So you can go ahead and give them that template. They'll fill out the form, as I mentioned. They'll run um, or hit the button to submit. It's going to trigger a GitHub action in the background. That GitHub action, once again, will create an application in Argo CD. And what Argo CD is going to do is going to monitor the GitHub repo, of course. And that application in this instance is the vCluster, which basically will create a cluster, vCluster 1, vCluster 2. And from there, you will have the kube config stored inside of Achilles. And that way, your developers can access that uh, Kubernetes cluster safely by retrieving that kube config. Once again, that is stored in Achilles, and in Achilles, you'll have certain folders for each developer that they have access to and nobody else. And finally, you'll see, or the developer will see that the cluster is ready because we will have a connection integration between Argo CD and Backstage. So the developer doesn't need to leave Backstage at all. They trigger the, the, the request for the vCluster and they'll see feedback right in the backstage UI right there. 
Okay, I have a full video now. We only have a limited amount of time together here, but if you wanna see how this all works in much more detail, you can go ahead and look at this video. It's on YouTube and it gives you the entire configuration from beginning to end. It's over, it's about 45 minutes, so you can follow along. You can see my GitHub repo and get all the details there. But I want to show you a quick demo of the workflow. I won't show you behind the scenes how this is all built, but at least to show you something that is working so that you can leave here knowing that, hey, I can build this myself. Now I'm a, in the persona of a developer. So my platform engineering team has created this nice new virtual cluster template for me. As a developer, I'm going to go ahead and choose this template, put in my owner name, repository, let's say app, let's call it team a app one cluster name, do the same team a one. And as you can see here, we only have one option. This is our host EKS cluster. So we'll select that, click review, click create. And that will go ahead and publish this new repo for us, trigger a GitHub action and register this component. So we can do a couple of things. We can look at our repository. Here's a repository ready to go. And just for the sake of argument, I put here a main go app that you can have as part of this repo. Actually, I have another video showing you how to deploy this also in, in the EKS cluster and have some deployments that you can use inside of Kubernetes. But for the sake of this demo, we're going to just skip over that. And if we go back here, you can open this in catalog. And now you can see that at the bottom here, Argo CD, you see nothing available here in just a few minutes. Once Argo has created this V cluster, we're going to see that this is ready to go. So as a developer, once again, I just need to view that my cluster is ready and then I can access the cube config of this cluster straight from Aquilas, which I would have access to as a developer. So we're, we're presenting or we're sending the actual credentials into the cluster in a secure method into Aquilas. So let's take a look at Argo CD and see what's going on. I see here my team A app one is syncing, or I think it's already synced. So that looks pretty cool. Let's go back to backstage and refresh this. And you can see here at the bottom that we are synced and the health status is healthy. So again, as a developer, I can see this and I can jump into my Achilles dashboard and get my cube config, which I'll do in just a minute. But I wanted to show you here what we can see from Argo CD, the destination server, the repo path, repo URL, the destination namespace, status is synced and so on. So let's now just go ahead and get our cube config. So click this link will take us to Achilles and let's log in. And under V clusters, once again, this will be available to your developers ahead of time. You have a folder, for example, in Achilles with the different teams and every team has access to, let's say a cube config for their cluster. So let's reveal the value here. There we go. Here's our cube config. Let's copy that and go back to our Visual Studio code. And from here, we're going to access the new V cluster. So let's use this variable here, encoded cube config equals, and then paste our cube config in base 64. And then let's decode it with this command. And then let's go ahead and export our kubeconfig environment variable to access cluster. Now we can run kubectl get namespaces. And now I see my new virtual cluster. I can also run kubectl get nodes. And I can see that I have one node here. And that's it. Thank you for attending. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in other conferences and videos.